You can also go to their website at www.enerfood.com. That's E N E R F like Frank, O O D like dog.com. Enerfood.com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enner Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is The Hawk coming to you. It's a live show Thursday night, 10-24-2013. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. And surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. And he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth, shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. No, for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. And there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. And they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. And thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. And he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, that is just magnificent. It's just, you know, I mean, the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, this is where you need to be at, is with our Father in heaven and the Lord Jesus. That's where we need to be. At the same time, we must be prudent. We must understand that we're not here to be run over. We're not here as Christians to be denied the right to worship. We're not here as Christians to be denied the right or respect for what it is we do, particularly in the United States. Particularly, do we not have, do we not have the documents which tell us do we not have the Declaration of Independence that starts out, you know? We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created and equal, and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. And then we go on down and, you know, but went along train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, Evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. We had under the Constitution the Bill of Rights. We have right here. Let me get to it. I like to read it. Amendment 1 to the U.S. Constitution, ratified December 15, 1791. Congress shall make no law 
respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. So now, Congress is not doing it, but then who allows, who allows the United States Air Force Academy to even suggest that they're going to remove from the oath? You want to know what right now? I'm just going to state this right now. Do not go into the United States military services. If you're considering joining them, do not join them at this time. If you're in a position to get out of them, get out of them, because what they're going to be posed to doing real quickly here is to attack their own population and utilize foreign troops in that to put you down because they consider you. If you follow the Constitution to be almost basically, or if you follow the Declaration of Independence, they consider you to be an insurgent. And here is the whole deal. You know, I mean, it's just sitting right there. Now, in order to protect that First Amendment and the others, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And I'm going to tell you what, anywhere it's going to be infringed from now on, you make sure that you, by the Second Amendment, itself, that you do not allow them to infringe upon your rights. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coming down to what the, uh, my old time buddies used to say, it's cutting time, all right? And, uh, you know, it's, uh, or I used to talk to people uh, in the South who were in factories and stuff, and they said, the coal man is getting ready to come, the coal man. When you got coals and whatever it is you make, he comes and collects them, takes them away. Well, let me tell you what. They're talking about it, and they I've told you about a document called the Domestic Insurgency and the Declaration of Martial Law. Um, and this was basically signed in uh, November 2008 by George Bush, but Obama has added to it since then. We have the uh, National Defense Authorization Act, which says that under that NDAA, that the executive branch has the sole consideration to determine who has the rights of citizenship and so they can be put into camps, into imprisoned and concentration camps indefinitely at the decision of the executive branch or the President of the United States. Well, you see, here's the deal. You see, I'm already beyond talking about the health care because, you see, it is destroying America. Millions of people have lost their coverage or are losing it or will be losing it. And then to rebuy the coverage, which will not even be equal to what you had, to buy that coverage, it'll be like two to three times higher or at least 50, 60 percent higher. This thing is going to blow up. I've told you in the past, do you remember when... Obama had the, the videotape prior to even running. He had it where he was talking to unions, and in there he said his plan was to create something that would then fail, that would then force force the single-payer system. This has been designed to fail. He's lied to you. Your president has lied to you. The president of the United States has lied to you when he said you can keep, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. If you like your doctor, you can keep it. That ain't so. It ain't necessarily so. Tell it to the millions already in Florida, uh, in California, and all over that have been told their plans are being canceled. Ah, <sighs> you see. I'm reading from this domestic insurgency and declaration of martial law. That was as of 12 October 2008. They did not want you to see it. Domestic counterinsurgency are those military, paramilitary, 
political, economic, and psychological and civic actions taken by a government to defeat civic domestic insurgency. It is an offensive approach involving all elements of national power. It can take place across the range of operations and a spectrum of conflict. It includes strategic and operational planning, intelligence development and analysis, training, material, technical advice, infrastructure development, tactical level operations, and many elements of PSYOPs. Generally, the preferred methods of support are through assistance to the local loyalists, loyalists, and the segregation and relocation of identified dissidents and disloyal elements to areas where they can be retra- retrained and re-educated. And leaders must consider the roles of military, intelligence, diplomatic, law enforcement, information, finance, and economic elements. Midlife in a domestic counterinsurgency. You see, here's how they define a domestic insurgency. And this is what I was getting at just a minute ago. Once again, this is domestic insurgency in the Declaration of Martial Law. It is a document that was done on 12 October 2008. And here's how they define. Here's what they say. Their their counterinsurgency responsibilities are to protect the population, establish local political institutions, reinforce local governments, eliminate insurgent capabilities, and exploit information from local sources. In other words, they get everybody to tittle-tattle on you. Now, here's what they say a domestic insurgency is. A domestic insurgency is organized movement aimed at the overthrow or the discrediting of the legally constituted federal and state governments through use of subversion and armed conflict or the discrediting. You see, even if you try to discredit the federal and state government, then you are an insurgent. It is a protracted politico-military struggle designed to weaken government control and legitimacy while increasing insurgent control. Political power is the central issue in a domestic insurgency. The primary goal of a domestic insurgency is to mobilize human and material resources in order to form an alternative to the federal and state governments. This alternative is called the counter-state. The counter-state may have much of the infrastructure possessed by the state itself, but this must be normally concealed since it is illegal. Thus, the counter-state is often referred to by the term clandestine infrastructure. Now, the fact of the matter is, let's go right back here. Military and cops, federal agents and goo-goo boys and G-men and and E-I-E-I-O's. Let's go back to the Declaration of Independence. You say in your document, you say in your document, Domestic Insurgency and Declaration of Martial Law, as of 12 October 2008, you say what I just read is that the primary goal of domestic insurgency is to mobilize human and material resources in order to form an alternative to the federal and state governments. Well, if your federal and your state government has become destructive of the ends, okay, and no longer has the consent of the governed, because that is where you derive your just powers from, is from the consent of the governed. Do you understand me, federal agents? Do you understand me, executive branch, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, EIEIO, let alone Chinese troops and Russian troops, who are beginning to look more like serpents and uh, scorpions, by the way. All of y'all are. 
that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. You see, but when a long train of abuse and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same design or the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government, to throw off such government, to throw off such government. Do you understand me, federal agents? Do you understand me, executive, legislative, judicial branch, military, EIEIOs? Do you understand that it is the right of the people to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security? Because when you guys have the same object and it events as a design to reduce us under absolute despotism, we have the right to throw you off. It's in the Declaration of Independence, which is a law of the land. It's the forming law of this nation. It is the first thing that said the United States, we're declaring Declaration of Independence from Great Britain. But on the other hand, you guys say, you guys say, you see, where did I read that? I read that to you at the beginning. You guys say that uh, if... We want to have a different thing that that's not right. And you see, it don't say anything about that in the Declaration of Independence. You guys are supposed to adhere to the Constitution, which you have not done. Instead, you NSA people, you're going to go and you're getting 124 billion phone calls in a month. What are you going to do with all the information? You know, what are you going to do with it? I hope you choke on it, NSA. Hope you choke on it. And you know, you, you, General Alexander, Hayden, all you scumbags that have twisted it and turned it and utilized it to create great power, you now have declared and made the United States a hissing to everybody around the world. You got 35, 38 leaders you've been, you know, Checking their little phones and all the stuff. You've got fly bugs. you got little things where you take the little plastic thing, you put it on the wall. you got them in every bathroom in the United States. you got them in every single country. you got them in every leader's house. You're infiltrating the whole deal. You guys are the enemy of the people. You call us the enemy of the state as you declared us in the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917. And then once again in 1933, the Trading Enemy Act of 1917 as amended in 1933, a.k.a. otherwise known as the Emergency Powers Act, you declared this was an executive branch dictatorship in the United States. Well, I think that's absolute despotism. I think it is the right of the people to throw overthrow the government. Under that, it's in the Declaration of Independence. But let me repeat it again. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them, meaning the people, under absolute despotism, it is the people's right, it's their right, it is their duty, it's their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Because you guys are not guarding our security. You're trying to get us in, fleeces of our money, destroy us. You're trying to create illness in our families. You're creating disharmony. You're destroying what the nation was. And then now you want to put us because you think that you want to do this, you see, because you love the Luciferian way and the communist way or the Nazi way. Because, you see, you then want to put us into concentration camps. And what was it that the, uh, the whole bet is here? You know? 
A domestic insurgency is an organized movement aimed at the overthrow or discrediting of the legally constituted federal and state governments. Well, the Declaration of Independence tells us that you guys are behaving in such a way that you're not guarding our future security, that you're not protecting our rights as enumerated under the Declaration of Independence and as uh, are specified specifically under the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, that if you're not doing that, and if everything you do, NDAA, Domestic Insurgency Declaration of Martial Law, these new things, these new policing of all America with this Obamacare and all this crap, all of the purges that are starting to happen in the military cadres because people are not going to try to disarm the American people, and they won't do it, so then they're getting cashiered, or they're said that they have kitty porn, or they said they drank too much, or they gambled, or they, or they womanized, or, or manized too much, and they're getting rid of all the officers, and now that is now going down even in the E3s and E4s. They're pulling your jackets, they're looking for them, and they're going to ask you that question. Your gay or queer or whatever commanding officer somewhere who's also probably a communist or a Nazi is going to ask you pretty quick here. Uh, are you a, are you a for, uh, or do you agree with same sex marriage? And if you say no, my Bible tells me no. They say, aha, I knew it. You're a Christian, which you are a terrorist. Didn't you understand that we told you when we just had the little meeting at Fort Hood or we had the little meeting on the East Coast or the West Coast or the EIEIO Coast when we told you that Christianity, evangelical Christians, that Catholics and pro-life people, that they were terrorists and that you could not associate with them and be in this person's army or Air Force or Navy or Marine Corps or Coast Guard or work for the government, or be an FBI, or whatever it is you want to be. Do you not see what they're doing, ladies and gentlemen? You see what they're doing, and now these people tell you that you can't say anything about that or try to discredit them. You can't do that, and you can't obey your duty as delineated by the Declaration of Independence. You cannot exercise your First Amendment right, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth, any of them. Because they say they control you. Well, I say that there is our Father in Heaven, there is Lord Jesus. And I say that we no longer have to tolerate this stuff under Declaration of Independence, under our constitutional rights. And they exist for a reason. They exist for a reason. Now, what else is it that they're going to do to you, you see? What else are the kind of things they're getting ready to do? Well, I've talked to you about this before, but I've been really researching and going into this deeper because I know that this is what's getting ready to come down. If you extrapolate, you can get rid of the day's headlines and figure out, well, what's going to happen tomorrow or two months from now or what's going to happen perhaps when they do the little drill for the power grid coming up here in another week or two, coinciding also with the time when they're going to be cutting food stamp benefits, and you see people say, well, we just get them old Republicans in, we'll elect them, they'll get them back in. Well, the fact is, Bush is the one who put this domestic insurgency declaration of martial law, he put it in the law. Obama's just refining and is now is the one acting on it and activating it. So don't think that. And then you see, it all sounds fine and good, we're going to get rid of entitlements until you're sitting there and you're, say, uh, 62 years old or 61 or 59, or whatever you are, and then they say, well, you don't get any uh, Social Security, uh, and we just confiscated your, uh, we, you don't get any Social Security until you're 75 years old, and we just confiscated all of your uh, 401Ks and IRAs because we had to give the banks to bail the banks out. You see where we're heading. You see what they're doing. Now, Here's some of the things they want to do, you see. Identify and depict those segments of the populations that are friendly or unfriendly towards U.S. and multinational forces. This right here, you see, this right here, you see, admits that foreign troops will be involved. 
not a whit. Let me just read that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to tell you is what I told you in 2004 when you thought I was a little bit wild, perhaps. Or some of you thought, well, that crazy hawk. You know, others knew that I was right. I told you back then that these people are getting ready to come for your liver and eat your children, eat your liver, and take you out in a blood sacrifice to their little G-God, Lucifer. Now that is being implemented. Now that is being marched every day, another few yards down the path. Every single day, it's being marched down that path. But let's see where we had here. Let's see. I've got it right here, I believe. All right. Um, this was uh, an alert placed up at stevequail.com, if you did not see it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's not the one. Here's the one I'm looking for right here. And this is a Q alert. Over 100 Chinese troops in UN uniforms at the mall today. Uh, let's see. They were at the local mall. Hours today, the mall is right by Fort Meade Army Post, NSA headquarters in Maryland. And uh, the person that saw him does not like to discuss anything like this. So I was surprised when they told me he saw over a 100 Chinese military men walking around today. I asked him to describe the uniforms, and they were clearly UN. So the soldiers spoke Chinese to each other. And when speaking, and to the store clerks, they spoke perfect English. Time has just about run out. Thank you for all you do and for our precious Savior, Jesus. That was Jay sent that to Steve Quayle. Now, I've talked around the backside to see what's going on and to see what I can find out about the Chinese there and why they would be at Fort Meade, where the NSA computers are all underground there, which is one of the most sensitive areas in the whole United States in terms of secrets and what have you. It's another one of those places, just like what's been in Colorado, in the deep underground there, and in New Mexico in the deep underground. You know, it's one of those places to where you would be the last place you would want red Chinese or Russians or anybody to be. You just wouldn't want them there because if they're there, why are they there? Well, I found out why they're there, ladies and gentlemen. And this is from the intelligence community sources. Let's just say it that way. The red Chinese that are at the Fort Meade U.S. Army post, which is also the NSA headquarters, located there in Maryland, those red Chinese, those 100, are there specifically. Are you listening? Are you listening to me? Those 100 red Chinese in uniform are at Fort Meade to receive Highly specific training in electronic warfare. Highly specific training in electronic warfare. Well, guess who's teaching them? Guess who's teaching them? The NSA and the U.S. Army is teaching red Chinese troops in United Nations uniforms about how to use and and, and to exploit electronic warfare which would include satellite killing, cyber attacks on computer facilities, electronic warfare that might cause you to have illness or to cause you as a population to go to sleep or to become agitated. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in a moment. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, EnterHealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10- to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. 
Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast at third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the Hawk on Survive to Thrive, Thursday night, 10-24-2013. And if you would like to get a discount on any of the products that Inner Health Botanical sells, you can go to innerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D. You can get the 40-day, 40-night pails of organic food. You can get the bladder act, uh, seaweed uh, extracts, etc., that will help you to uh, combat, along with the inner food as well, help you combat radiation, which is now starting to blanket this country from the Fukushima. And you can get anything, any of the herbal tinctures, the silymarin, any of the items that you might need to stay alive and to stay healthy. You can get an additional discount off of those, even above any volume discounts. And if you call 866-762-9238 to order, 866-762-9238, or go to innerfood.com, E-N-E-R, F O O D dot com. You tell them Hawk sent you. You tell them Hawk sent you. Hawk is the code, and you will get an additional amount off. All right. Now, if you want to get a hold of any gold or silver, and if you want to get it from somebody who told you to buy it back in when it was two seventy nine, two eighty on gold, and when silver was four something or five something. You call Steve Quayle at 406-586-4840, 406-586-4840, and get gold, silver, platinum, palladium. You tell them that Hawk sent you. You tell them Hawk sent you, and I will tell you what, get it as much as you can. Get your money out of these banks. Get your money out of these 401Ks, these IRAs, all of these things that they're going to grab onto and trap. When the collapse comes in the economics, and they're going to make sure that happens, it may not fall just of itself in the economic world because they keep our printing according to, <laughs> this is just incredible. They're talking about printing as much as up to one trillion a month if necessary to keep this afloat. Do you not think that the price of rice might go up a little bit or the gasoline might be Closer to what it is in Afghanistan, $500 a gallon, $500 a gallon for gasoline in Afghanistan. You think they may not want people to drive or to move around about the country? (laughs) Oh, no. But the Taliban can move. But the U.S. troops are getting to where they can't move. Um, never mind, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what else we got here. Let's stay on this domestic area. This was also said to Steve. Militarized police and the sheriff's department's National Guard now under DHS control. As I'm sure most of us are, I bless you and thank you for all you do. So I'm sure most of our have been very concerned about the militarization of our local police and sheriff departments. We've been talking about this for years, ladies and gentlemen. And after reading your alert about East Coast law enforcement officers being asked if they would disarm citizens, if so ordered. Maybe I ought to read that first. Let's read that first. And let's see here. Police departments all over the eastern U.S. have been called to meetings and asked if they would disarm the general public if ordered. A group of ham radio operators that were on last night stated that police departments all over the eastern U.S. have been called to meetings and asked if they would disarm the general public if ordered. I'm getting great reports that most cops are flatly refusing, and some of them have actually threatened the idiots, asking them if they would comply. 
A lot of them are good, God-fearing Christian brothers that are sick and tired of the crap coming out of Washington. This is good news in an otherwise dark world, and we should pray for these cops that they will keep their sworn oaths of the Constitution. Yes, I do pray for that. But I've told you how this will work. It's not going to be an outright demand in this respect. And I'll get back to that in a moment. So here's the deal. After reading your alert, the guy, other guy says that about East Coast law enforcement being asked if they would disarm citizens. So it occurred to me that our own local law enforcement may need that military arsenal and equipment to defend our cities, counties, and states from the federal or foreign forces. I don't agree with that whatsoever. Civil war indeed. I'm hoping most in the military are still dedicated Americans. Well, that is not necessarily so. A lot are, but there's a lot that are not. There's a lot that are lost to the Luciferian. They're primarily at the top slots in the officer corps, those that are giving the orders. And if they're not, then they're being exited out of the service, cashiered, not promoted, put up on false charges or goofy charges or ridiculous charges. You know, like somebody drank too much, like show me a general or an admiral that didn't have a fifth of booze every now and then. Or, or chase after girls or boys or whatever it is they chase after. So I don't, I don't think that is necessarily the case. Perhaps the leadership that has been relieved of duty due to the loss of confidence will be willing to lead against hostile forces if the time comes. Some will, some won't. Others in those top slots of leadership, which may, you may or may not know, you know, being a big general sometimes is worth a lot of money. You get tipped off on certain things. You know what stock to buy. You get all kind of tips as to where to go, and uh, you get little uh, things put in little bank accounts overseas, this place and that place and the other place, in order for making your recommendation to buy the next MRAP, ZRAP, DRAP, uh, GRAP of the EIEIO missile system or whatever. Okay? So let's face it, there's high dollars at that part of the food chain. High dollars, millions of dollars in retirements, etc. And guaranteed pay for life, etc. at high levels, including all the other benefits and perks and what have you. So a lot of people are just going to cash out and try to go somewhere and stay quiet and not get involved as in going to one of those little islands where some people seem to be going and retiring, as to go to Patagonia, as to go to certain other places in the, in the mountains and certain things and retreats which are reserved, you know, for intelligence and, and this guy and that guy and the other guy. They're going to go to those places. Some may command, but don't count on it. And then he says here, uh, FYI, an NCO and active duty National Guard from the Northeast USA called into Alex Jones' radio show yesterday, and that was yesterday, and the National Guard is now under DHS command, and the mission orders coming down are being changed to insurrection control. Do you hear what old Hawk was telling you? Domestic insurgency in the Declaration of Martial Law. And then you can tie that in with certain Statements made by, uh, like the Florida congressman saying that uh, Tea Party people are domestic enemies. Or all these other senators and congress people and stuff in the fight of the government shutdown and the budget deficit. Tea parties and Republicans are domestic enemies or are insurgents or they're kidnappers or they're terrorists or what have you. Right to life people. All these things. And now the attack on Christians everywhere in the United States. Denial of mass being, you know, served by the priests in the military. All kind of new, reinvigorated, anti-Christian or labeling of Christians and right to life people and Christian groups. Evangelicals, Catholics, everybody who's Christian basically 
being labeled as a terrorist or an insurgent or a dangerous domestic group. And if then going to the next level and saying, if you donate to those, Mr. Army person, according to the uh, Fox's report out of uh, the Fort Hood uh, meeting where they told it to the different people in the military, that if you even donated to one of these churches or groups or a right to life group or gave money to the Catholic Church in a sense or the evangelical church, that they would find out about it and that you could be possibly court-martialed for supporting your own church in the United States Army. Well, let me tell you something. If you're in the Army and you can get out, get out and cash your out now. If you can take your pension with you and you're waiting a year or two, then get out and get your stuff. If you're going to re-up and you have to re-up, and even though you've got a few years in, figure out something else you can do, get it lined up, and get the heck out now. Because here is the problem. It's the insurgency business. But here is the problem, and here is the great leveler. Now let me give you another piece of information that I got. And I don't think I said it last Thursday or Friday, because I don't think I had it at that point. But maybe I did. But if I didn't, well, then here's what I just got it right after that. I can't recall exactly. So much stuff happens every day now. You can't tell the players without a scorecard, ladies and gentlemen. But I was told through the dark uh, pools and the back channels and the, all the stuff, I was given this as a rumor. Let's just say it's a rumor. And it's alleged, allegedly, 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 allegedly. You got that? Allegedly. That the Joker Tut's people or the Joker Tut at his behest or whatever have allowed during this specific time period, allegedly, of the government quote-unquote shutdown caused by those domestic enemies, the Tea Party wing and faction of the Republican Party, you see? According to the Joker Touch people. But apparently and allegedly during that time period, certain Al-Shabaab types, or in other words, Al-Qaeda types, uh, perhaps the Somali stripe, uh, recent uh, activity in Kenya, some of it coming and known about by the United States intelligence community since last June when they watched people leave, I believe, from Minneapolis to go on over there to take part. And we talked about that and how, isn't it interesting how for the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda and all those different people, the Muslim groups in Kenya, that a certain Joker Touch half-brother is the big money man and fundraiser for them and manages their money. So what is the tie in there? Is there any tie in there? Fiddle with boys internally? Can you connect the dots? Huh? 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 Ted Gunderson, if he was still alive, could connect the dots, but you killed him. You poisoned him. So here's the deal. Here's what I found out. That certain Al-Shabaab types allegedly were allowed to to uh, acquire through certain government agencies or whatever, or cutouts in the U.S. government, weaponized biological weapons of some sort. That's what I was told. And that specifically, they're going to use them for a false flag at the behest of the powers that be in the U.S., allegedly anyway, that they're going to use, they're going to blame that on the Republican Party for allowing this to happen because it occurred during the time of the quote-unquote so-called government shutdown. Now, I've told you a million times that the best thing that they would ever do, you know, in terms of retaining military retaining state police, sheriffs, deputies, local police departments, and federal agents, etc. The greatest thing that we retain them in spite of 
the tyranny that's being exhibited in spite of the unconstitutional things being done to the American people, in spite of the fact that everything that this government now has seemed to be doing is invariably as the object of evincing a design to reduce the people under absolute despotism. So in spite of all that, and you have all these pledges, so I won't do it, and I won't do this, and I won't do that. I have told you, police officers, that you were asked a few years ago, most of you, if you're new and you were asked recently, for the list of your family members and other close associates or friends, usually just family or, or a, you know, or a, a next, like, grandma and grandpa or maybe a cousin or two, and you write it down, their name, their address, their phone, you know, all the different information about them, including their social security numbers, etc. And then you're supposed to then give that up to your boss or whatever, who then put it into the hopper, uh, the national security sort of hopper, and that these will be the people that you want to be able to get through a checkpoint, if necessary, to go to the safe spot where they promise we're going to take care of your family Oh, yes, Mr. State Trooper, we're going to take care of your family. And uh, even though you've been instructed to drive to uh, 300 miles away and across the state to the other place where your duty will be over there from where you normally live, your family will be protected in an undisclosed location so that if you're captured, you could not disclose under torture where your family was being kept. No. It's going to be kept where you don't know where they're at so they can use your family as a pawns against you and force you to override your natural, constitutional, God-fearing instincts, instincts that everybody thinks and, and, and talks about as going to be operational. And they are for many people. But how many people are going to be following those constitutional God-fearing instincts when their families are being threatened, when their families are being held in pawn or in check by the federal governments. Perhaps the DHS has got some nice, friendly Russian troops, or perhaps there's been some nice, uh, friendly red Chinese troops that, oh, I don't know, maybe you're hanging out around, uh, you know, uh, either either kind, maybe they're in Ohio, or maybe they're, around Fort Hood, or maybe they're by Bragg, or maybe they're by Benning, or maybe Fort Carson, Colorado, or maybe they're down at the Stead, or Eglin, or, you know, wherever, or McDeal. Or up at Fort Drum, where they train all these foreign paramilitaries, which are also going to be included, as you recall, what I said, who's going to be included, you know, to go against the domestic insurgents, you see. If you even try to discredit them, you're a domestic insurgent. If you don't like Obamacare, you're a domestic insurgent. If you are of the Tea Party, you're a domestic insurgent. If you are a voter of Ron Paul and the Libertarians, or let alone Rand Paul, or this Ted Cruz, you're now a domestic enemy. Okay? You're an insurgent. If you are a Christian, if you are somebody who believes in a literal interpretation of the Bible, remember the old versions of that with Janet Reno and then with the Politano and the FBI. Anybody from the FBI standpoint that paid cash for their coffee at Starbucks could be a terrorist. <laughs> Anybody who is at the military surplus store who's preparing for the future, who thinks that Anybody who thinks that the U.S. government might be listening into everybody's phone calls. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, oh, you mean, oh, they are doing that. Oh, well, they're still, they're still terrorists now, aren't they? And you see how some of you police, some of you federal agents listening, you see how you've turned it in your own mind and twisted it and you've denied it and you've been in denial. And now it's all right staring you in front of the face. And now you're saying, well, I ain't going to go along with it. Well, then you'd better rescind that order to protect your family and to let them get through the lines, so to speak, 
and to go to the secret safe place where they're going to be cared for. And, oh, yes, you've already been promised that your pay will continue no matter what. You'll even get double and triple pay, or they'll say combat-type pay during the insurrection. And to a certain degree, we don't want to live in a world where it's filled with riots and those type of things, do we? <laughs> but you see... You create the chaos, and then what is the Luciferians, the High Masonics, the Illuminati want? Ordo ab chao. From the chaos comes the order. Start goose-stepping there, federal boys. Department of Human Sacrifice, FBI, CIA, NSA, the necrophiliac Shiites. Start your goose-steps. In cooperation with your private sector partnerships with IQTEL, who runs, oh, IQTEL, oh, excuse me, that's a CIA front company, isn't it? IQTEL, allegedly, is a CIA front company. Uh, allegedly, Google, Facebook, all these are allegedly CIA or NSA front companies. Allegedly. Oh, oh, well. Now, tell me about this new thing you cops are all excited about. Double aught. The dragon, double lot dragon, optimum optics is your new buzzword, isn't it? Optimum optics. Yes, by golly, when we go to make a raid on a house, we will have their entire financial information, their military service information, all of the information about everybody in there, any concealed carry permits, any uh, 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 arrests or convictions, any kind of jail time, your school records, all the different things. Blueprints of the house when it was originally put in to be built. Impossible. Also, any time the number of calls that have been to that property or what kind of calls they're for. Surrounding copies. Also, your Lexus Nexus kind of con comparisons. Who you work for, who your neighbors are, and any kind of other information related to who their mistress is, who this is, who that is, who, uh, which milkman the, uh, the wife of the house might fool with. You know, the whole nine yards. And you're all excited. <coughs> and you're calling it double locked. The double lot buck. It's double lot optimum optics. Well, I hope you choke on it. Whatever happened to knocking on the door with a person in a blue uniform or in a brown or tan and green uniform with a hat on that says sheriff, deputy, or says police? Whatever happened to knocking on the door and saying, I have a warrant for your arrest? Or, wow, that said person is at the barber shop or at the grocery store or, or going down the street, you know, jogging in the park. Whatever happened to serving the warrant there rather than busting in in the middle of the night and suppose optimum optics, somebody keyed in the wrong address. Or suppose the same software company, maybe working for InQtel, which I was going to tell you, is involved. They bought a company that's involved in the health care information. Oh, the Obamacare has got a company that's involved with InQtel, which is the CIA front group. <laughs> it's all so loving, you see. Hello, glove. Yellow submarine. You go and you see the glove is this most evil, insidious cartoon character in the yellow submarine. Glove, yes. Well, anyway, it's just, if it was not real, ladies and gentlemen, it would be laughable and be like a cartoon almost. But in fact, it is deadly serious. So this Optimum Optics now, and this part of that is your GPS from the census, what you told the census guy, all the things you said, everything that you've written in the local newspaper, all of that is going to be in the Dragon Optimum Optics. And guess what? It's going to be displayed in a heads-up device, like a, sort of like a, a Google Glass or a helmet visor, perhaps, that might be a little more Microsoft-ish or Google-ish or, you know, whatever these EIEIO telecom companies, you see. And then eventually they'll acquire all of your health information, which they're getting now, then they'll acquire your brain scans and all of those things. And then they'll, they'll look at your 
genetic genomes, and that information will be in there. And then it will say, ah, they could be susceptible because of genetic makeup to a certain type of disease. All you have to do is apply XYZ frequency in a pulse pattern of so many rates per second or minute, and we'll just apply that to them, you know, from a satellite or from the little local box, you know, the shoulder-fired box, you know, that they got. You can sit in a patrol car and hit them. And we'll do that. We'll just turn them on, and they'll turn on seizures in them or turn on cancer that's a quick cancer that will kill them immediately. Won't that be loving, and won't that solve a lot of crimes? Well, you police had better get out of it. You better get with it and understand it, because I'm going to tell you what, what needs to be done from the American people's standpoint is to understand that you must now form the resistance, the resistance, the maqui, the whatever it is you want to call it. You better get your resistance already going. And the wit that means food, firearms, medical supplies, and biological, nuclear, biological, chemical equipment. If you do not have a good gas mask or even, a say, an Israeli civilian mask, but with the new filters, et cetera, and of new construction, then you better obtain one. Tyvek F suits, the booties, the hoods, the whole nine yards. If you could get more than one, get it. Start getting your bolt holes. Start building your secret rooms in the basements. Start digging your tunnels that go off the property and where you can exit. Start doing those secret room type things and hiding places where you can hide supplies, money, weapons. Start to do that and form the resistance against these unconstitutional Luciferian scum who are coming for you. Good night to the mighty men and women of valor. I know you're up there in the TR-3B and the TR-4s and other large craft up planet. Those of you who are still there and believe in the Lord Jesus, if you can call your fire down against the loose period, then the enemies of the Lord, then by all means do it if you'll allow it. Them old fandango ranges, wherever you may be, I know you're ready. And old Mickey Lapua, not only are you ready, but you dialed in. You got the cool side of things. But you believe in your mouth and your eyes down the loophole. Looking out there. very night without a fight. Stand up for the Lord Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Stand up for the Constitution. Stand for your family.